Last week, Elon Musk's SpaceX launched a giant 160-foot-tall rocket prototype, the SN8 8 miles into the Earth's atmosphere, as part of the company's bid to land humans safely on Mars by 2026. The rocket launch was heralded as a success for SpaceX, bringing the company and Elon Musk this much closer to achieving their goals of interplanetary travel and living. However, a lot more work still needs to be done for future iterations of the SpaceX Starship to hit the 62 mile mark, widely considered to be the edge of outer space. The Starship would, for example, need to reach an escape velocity of 25,000 miles per hour, the speed needed for the rocket to escape the Earth's gravitational pull, and it would need to do all that while staying in one single piece. But if Elon Musk wants to get humans to Mars by 2026, I doubt that the technology needed to launch the rocket into space will be the biggest hurdle that Elon Musk and the scientists and engineers at SpaceX can expect to face. A mission to Mars and back is expected to last at least 560 days. That's 560 days in space, a longer time than any human has been in space. The current record holder is astronaut Scott Kelly who spent 340 consecutive days in space and had to endure some devastating effects on his body. Plenty of great YouTube videos have already gone through the detrimental effects that being in space for long periods of time can have on you physically. Effects ranging from muscle atrophy to severe loss in bone density and circulatory changes, oxidative stress and liver fibrosis and androgenic alopecia have been well documented in astronauts returning home from longer missions. But what about your brain? How bad can space travel be for your mind? My name is Hashem Mashur and I'm a University of Cambridge graduate and student doctor and this is my YouTube channel, Doctor Tell Me Why, where you guessed it, I get to talk about anything I want, so long as it's medicine or health related. And so today I'll be summarizing some of the best available research in space medicine and telling you about all the terrible and awful things that space travel can do to your brain, mainly as a consequence of ionizing radiation and microgravity. So if at any point you find yourself enjoying this video, then please take the time to subscribe. If you do, you'll be amply rewarded with great high quality medical content on a weekly basis. So what exactly can prolonged space travel do to your brain? Space travel means exiting the Earth's protective atmosphere and facing high and potentially dangerous levels of ionizing radiation on a regular basis, something that you would typically not have to worry about whilst you're safely here on Earth. And that, well, that's bad news for your brain. Studies where mice were exposed to typical levels of ionizing radiation found in space demonstrated increased beta amyloid plaque deposition, the same plaques you tend to find in people suffering from Alzheimer's disease. These mice were also found to have significantly reduced dendritic connections between neurons in their brain, particularly in the hippocampus and entorhinal cortex, areas of the brain that are important in navigation, memory, and regulating our perception of time. Dendrites are an integral part to how your brain cells can communicate with each other, relaying important pieces of information to different areas of the brain. A year following their safe return to Earth, these dendritic connections showed little or no signs of recovery. Hence, space travel and the ionizing radiation that comes with it can have some permanent side effects on your brain. And it's not like these dendrites were dendrites that you just did not need. Space travel and ionizing radiation was found to have some very observable effects on the mice as the mice appeared to suffer from impaired recognition, memory and showed some atypical behavioral problems. Scientists believe that these cognitive deficits are a direct result of reduced dendritic connections as the mice with the worst reductions in dendrites were the ones showing the biggest cognitive declines. I think it's important to note here that while all the mice appeared to be affected by some extent, there was still some significant variation in how their brains respond to the same amount of ionizing radiation. Moreover, studies also demonstrated that persistent exposure to low-dose radiation like the radiation found in outer space could downregulate neurotransmitters and glutamatergic NMDA receptors. An exposure to cosmic radiation can result in epigenetic modifications permanently altering gene expression and contributing to a state of constant neuroinflammation. So think about it this way, ionizing radiation from space travel can light your brain up on fire and rob it of its essential connections, making it function less as one unit and more as disjoint parts of one broken machine not working well together at all. Pretty much a double if not triple whammy if you ask me.
But what about microgravity? What can microgravity do to your brain? Well, a well-documented syndrome reported in astronauts is visual impairment intracranial pressure syndrome which results in a significant decline in vision. Long-duration spaceflights are hypothesized to result in cardiovascular changes resulting in increased pressure in both your brain and in your eyes. These increased brain pressures result in the brain shifting upwards which can in the long run compress vital structures and is the reason why some astronauts come back from long-duration missions, with a severe decline in vision. Overall, this increased pressure seems to also result in an increased loss in brain volume in the astronauts returning home from long-duration spaceflights, more than the 0.2% per year that you would expect to see as a result of typical brain aging. Oxidative stress also appears to be a big problem as microgravity can also impact the brain's ability to produce vital protective proteins, like pyruvate dehydrogenase and cyanonuclein B which together help regulate energy metabolism in the brain preventing oxidative damage. One study beautifully demonstrated how this can result in inflammation leading to demyelination, a phenomenon where brain cells lose their protective fat coating, making them vulnerable to atrophy. Typically, astronauts will engage in rigorous training programs which can help to prevent or alleviate some of the effects that space travel can have on their bodies and brains. But if Elon Musk gets his way, space travel will be made available to ordinary folk like me and you. People who only really hit the gym when they realize that they can no longer fit in their trousers anymore. So I'm not exactly sure if... I'm willing to hop on a spaceship and head to Mars just yet, but I suppose you'll have to wait until 2026 when the Starship is ready and SpaceX begins selling tickets to Mars. I wonder how much they'll cost. Anyway, leave a comment below and tell me whether you would be willing to hop on a spaceship and head to Mars if Elon Musk offered you a free ticket, despite the physical damage that a trip like that can do to your brain and to your mind. Very keen to hear what you guys think and, you know, tell me how much you think a ticket would cost. I'm afraid that's it for today. Thank you for making it the very end with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please give this video a thumbs up so the YouTube algorithm can give me a thumbs up. If you really love this video, then please take the time to subscribe. If you subscribe, you'll get to see me present to you the latest groundbreaking medical research, tell you about all these fascinating medical conditions and give you top tips on living a healthier life which I suppose everyone needs in 2020, 2021, for the rest of the decade. Love you all to bits and see you all next Saturday. Endeavor, with NASA's final space station crew compartment that brings a bay window view to our celestial backyard.